All right, so good morning. Uh, thank you for your interest in uh, uh, talk about Bash. Um, so I met, um, I teach Linux at University College in Ghent, uh, or Ghent. I teach mainly Linux uh, statistics. I uh, coach uh, projects and, uh, and theses. Uh, I've been a Linux user since uh, last, uh, last millennium, basically, and uh, full time since uh, the, the turn of the, of the millennium. Uh, so, who of you just loves uh, writing Bash scripts? Ah, cool. Actually, I I expected no, or at least very few uh, few hands. But I'm good to see that there's uh, at least a few. Um, oh, we all uh, Bash is the is the, the scripting language that we love to bash. Uh, it's ugly. It's it's weird. It's arcane. The, the syntax is. Uh, especially, uh, we, we notice this with students that we introduce to uh, to bash printing. Uh, if it's not uh, too very easy to uh, uh, to learn about uh, bash and to, to get to know it very well. However, uh, bash also is it's everywhere. Uh, you cannot avoid uh, bash. Uh, it's not going anywhere soon. Uh, and uh, well, it, it it's actually useful to automate uh, tedious tasks and. Uh, a big um, advantage, I think, is there's no dependency, so it's available on even the smallest Linux system. Uh, you at least have a, a shell or a, or a bash to automate the tasks. So if you can accept this, uh, then hopefully also you can accept that learning bash is, uh, is useful, that it's a useful skill, and that also it's uh, useful to put some effort in writing quality code. Uh, so I hope that you can um, except uh, that, that it matters to, to apply good coding practices and I hope uh, that I don't, don't even have to um, um, yeah, suggest a revision control that it goes without saying. Um, one of the um, most important books that I've read about IT is um, Robert C. Martin, uh, Uncle Bob's book, uh, Clean Code. Uh, I was uh, still uh, teaching programming back in those days. Um, it's actually when uh, I have two uh, two sons, uh, twins, and uh, I was reading this book when they were just born, uh, and we had to give them uh, give them milk uh, late at night or uh, during the night. And I remember uh, having one kid uh, and a bottle of milk uh, on my lap, and then the the clean code book open uh, as well to. Uh, to, to learn that this is uh, specifically towards uh, uh, Java, that was uh, with Java as examples, but the principles are applicable to any uh, programming <coughs> language, and I think they made me a better Bash uh, developer as well. Um, so the definition, or the uh, basic definition of clean code is uh, when you read the code, the intent of the author is clear. And in Bash, that's sometimes hard to achieve because right? the, the syntax is sometimes weird, and it's not especially for uh, a novice. It's not always uh, clear on what a specific line of Bash code does. So what I hope to uh, to, to provide you with uh, in, in this talk is uh, some tips on how to improve the robustness and readability of your shell scripts. Uh, this is a very opinionated talk, it's what I learned. <coughs> I have, uh, some of the tips I have not seen in many other places, so I hope that you get something novel out of this talk that you can use in your own uh, daily practice. Uh, so, first of all, how to improve robustness of your uh, shell scripts. Um, let's start with how I uh, have set up uh, my PC to write uh, shell scripts. I use uh, VI as an editor, and the uh, ALE plugin uh, stands for the Asynchronous Lint <coughs> Engine. Uh, is the most important uh, plugin that I uh, use for uh, for VI, and then Shellcheck as well. Shellcheck is a static analyzer for uh, for shell scripts. I'm going to give you an example uh, later on, and uh, there's two other template. Um, uh, Vim plugins that I use uh, for shell scripting uh, is templates.vim. It's uh, not very well known uh, uh, plugin, but it's useful to me and uh, all systems. 
So the ALE, the asynchronous lint engine, um, for every uh, file type that you have, if you have installed a linter for that specific file type, then the ALE plugin will run it in the background and it will show you the lines where you have problems. This is an example uh, for JavaScript, uh, but it works just as well for uh, Bash. Uh, in Bash, there's two, uh, two checks that it does, the ALE. It will uh, perform bash-n, uh, is your uh, shell script syntactically correct, and then shell check uh, as well. Uh, so, uh, shell check is a command line tool. Uh, if you apply to a script, it will give you <coughs> um, an overview of potential problems in the, your uh, scripting style. So, this goes much further than uh, a syntax check. Uh, a shell check will also uh, uh, try to check common mistakes. For example, if you um, uh, you access a variable uh, in, in a shell script, the, uh, if it, the variable does not exist, it will replace it with an empty string instead of uh, giving an error. Uh, so this is something that, uh, that shell check will, will catch. Uh, also, uh, spaces are a problem in, in strings in, uh, in, in bash, so it's important to use quotation correctly. Uh, quotation is also something that shell check will, will catch. But it's something uh, it's indispensable if you're writing uh, shell scripts, I think. Uh, Templates.vim uh, is yeah, quite a, a simple uh, plugin that uh, for every file type you can um, define a template, put it in some directory in the .vim directory and uh, if you create a new file it will preload it with the code that you have uh, that you have specified. I'm not getting any network. Okay, that's a pity. Um, but if you go to the um, to the the schedule the loading schedule and you click on the on my talk the link to the slides are in there and uh, you can find the, the scripts or the, the template for yourself maybe later on I can try if we have a network but if not you have to believe me um, LT snips is a uh, yeah, um, a, a tool that you can you can define as snippets and it will expand them to uh, yeah, to whatever you whatever code whatever text you want, which is also useful to speed up uh, development. Um, my first advice uh, to novice uh, Bash uh, users or Bash developers, if that's the word. Uh, is to write code incrementally. And what I often see my students do is uh, they're writing a, a script, for example, to install a, a LAMP stack. Uh, they have written 100 lines of code and they haven't run the script even once. And then at that time, of course, the script will fail. Uh, if you're not confident in the, how the bash syntax works, then uh, of course it will fail. I also cannot write 20 lines of, uh, of, of shell scripting code without writing mistakes. Uh, so it's important to write one line of code and execute it and see what it does. And uh, increment, uh, write code incrementally and test continually. Um, so my advice is also have at least two terminals open. Uh, one with the, uh, your editor of choice and one with uh, where you are executing the, uh, the scripts continually. Uh, so this is also something that my, uh, novice uh, uh, Linux users in my class uh, lose a lot of time with. Uh, so they have one terminal window, uh, they enter Vim to write some code, <coughs> exit Vim, execute, enter Vim again, and then they lose the, the error uh, message. So, they, uh, right, so this takes a, a lot of time, you lose a lot of time with uh, working with this. And then every shell script should start with these three uh, commands. Uh, 
um, in a blog post uh, that I found somewhere. Is this is called the unofficial bash strict mode? It um, uh, changes the default behavior of bash in uh, a few specific uh, cases. The uh, set dash or exit will have your script abort as soon as um, uh, one statement ends with an exit status different from zero. And so exit status zero means the command has succeeded, so everything is okay. Uh, an exit status of uh, different than zero is something that went wrong. And so default behavior is the script will continue and then later on you will probably get in trouble, but you won't know uh, no, well, this makes your scripts uh, harder to debug if uh, your, the error happens somewhere on line 50, uh, but it only crashes on line 70, then it's hard to find where the, uh, the, the original uh, mistake was. So uh, having your scripts on boards at the, the point of failure immediately, that makes your scripts already much uh, easier to debug. This, I think, is also uh, important. Uh, no unset will... Uh, the, the default behavior, if you access the value of a variable in bash and the variable does not exist, it will uh, replace it with a zero, starting with an empty string. Uh, so it will uh, replace it with some value and the script will continue and, of course, it will fail later on. Uh, this, will, this setting will abort the scripts uh, on the... Uh, at the moment where you access an unbound variable, uh, which also makes your scripts easier to debug. And then the final one, uh, if an uh, error happens uh, in a pipe, for example, four commands that are, uh, are, are piped uh, consecutively, um, default behavior is the error will uh, only be reported at the final uh, stage of the pipe, the pipe fail will uh, not hide errors within the pipe. Uh, so, if you have a template to start writing a shell script, these three commands should be in the, at the beginning. Uh, there's a shorter way of writing these commands. I think it's set dash e uh, u, uh, and the pipe fail is not, there's not a short option. Uh, but my preference is to write it out because it's much easier to read and to interpret the, uh, the long versions of the, of the commands uh, than, the, than the short ones. Uh, this is also something that you, uh, you may find useful uh, to include in every script that you write, and that's the value of the internal field separator. And so, uh, bash when interpreting a command line, uh, it will uh, divide uh, the entire line of code into separate parts. Um, it will uh, disconnect the commands from uh, parameters. It will um, put all the parameters in, uh, in the uh, positional parameters, and dollar one, dollar two, and so on. And the way that it splits up the line is according to the contents of the internal field separator uh, variable. And the default value is a space, a new line, and a tab character. And it's useful to remove the space from the value of the internal field separator. Um, I have an example of uh, how this works. Let's see if I can quickly... I am prepared to uh, set this up. I should be able to find it quickly. Uh, readable. I, may, I can increase the font a bit. Uh, so, um, I've written a function that will print each argument that you pass to the function on a separate line. Uh, so the idea is to demonstrate how uh, parameters are split up. Um, so I'm going to create some directories with spaces in the names. Uh, a directory. <coughs> And um, here I'm showing what directories did I make. Did I make? 
uh, and then I'm going to um, put all those directories in a variable and I want to iterate over them. Okay, this script will not perform correctly. Let's see what it does. Okay, so this is the execution of the find command on, rule, uh, on, the, on line 5. So I have a directory called IFS, and then these are directory names with spaces in them. Spaces will cause a lot of grief uh, to, to patch uh, shell script. Uh, so here I put the, the list of uh, file names in the variable directories, and I'm going to print each of them. The internal field separator will, uh, so the, the script here, I, the, sorry, the function at print each will be called with all the names of, of these files in a long string. And the internal field separator says, I split up on spaces, uh, new lines and tag characters. Uh, so new lines will be, uh, 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 calls a split. But the spaces here as well, and if I print all of the all of the uh, parameters on a separate line, uh, the spaces will cause uh, problems. Uh, this space will make your uh, script fail. Here I'm uh, resetting or setting the uh, the value of the internal field separator to only tap and new line. And if I run the function again, then this is what the behavior that we get which is what we want. So internal field separator will make the, uh, the splits of the uh, arguments of parameters only on the, on the new lines. And this, the names for the spaces will be kept together. <coughs> uh, what I also uh, would recommend is have your scripts uh, print a lot of outputs. Uh, with, uh, if you have written a complex script, uh, it will give you a better idea of where exactly the uh, error is, uh, at what what uh, part of the script succeeded, uh, and where does it go wrong. Uh, my Ultisnips uh, template has uh, um, yeah, a snippet for uh, log messages or log functions that I use in most of my scripts. Uh, so this would, uh, the function log would, the, what you pass on as an argument, it will print it in, uh, in yellow with uh, this uh, inf, or info uh, in front of it uh, to the error string. Uh, if the uh, variable debug is equal to on, uh, then I will print, uh, then the debug function will uh, yeah, write its arguments uh, in cyan, I think I, I chose as a color, a different color. So if I want to uh, turn off uh, debug uh, outputs, I just change the variable name and my script is much less verbose. Uh, I also have an error message uh, function which will print something in red. Uh, so having the colors uh, makes the outputs of your scripts uh, clearer and uh, having the functions add, uh, saves you a lot of time of uh, implementing or, or writing clear uh, log messages. Uh, another tip of making your uh, scripts easier to, uh, to debug, uh, if you encounter some weird problem that you cannot, uh, uh, cannot solve immediately through uh, shell check errors or something like that, uh, you can uh, put around some problematic code that you want to debug uh, in more detail. You can put the command set dash x and on, in the end set plus x. The effect of, uh, of this command is that it, uh, from that time on, uh, bash will show you the, uh, the command that it's executing but after all the substitutions, all the types of substitution that it's, it performs. And for example, if I... Uh, do this in the script here.
And so the print each uh, didn't work from the first time, so I, I would set the dash x and plus x in front and behind it. Uh, and this is part of the effect. And lines starting with plus are uh, output from the set dash x uh, command. Uh, so this line of code uh, will be executed. I print each with these arguments. Uh, this already gives a better uh, idea of what is going on. Uh, all the lines with a plus are uh, the consequence of the set dash x. Um, yeah, another, another thing that you could uh, consider using is uh, writing unit tests for shell scripts. Uh, I use uh, the Bash Automated Testing System. If you saw my previous talk, I talked about that uh, earlier on. Um, I have some. Uh, I put links to some examples of how I uh, use it exactly, but since I. Sean came to fix something. No. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do that. <laughs> so, if you're interested, check it out or come uh, talk to me later on uh, today. I'm here all day and I'm happy to, uh, uh, to talk about this. Uh, but the, these examples are from uh, lab assignments that we give our students uh, in the introductory, uh, Introduction to Linux course. Uh, we asked them to write shell scripts and we wrote some acceptance tests that to check if the, uh, the scripts perform as specified in the assignment. Uh, this here is, um, comes from an assignment in the last year of the, uh, the curriculum. Uh, we ask students in some assignment to set up um, 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 work, uh, um, web server with WordPress. Uh, and this uh, test script will check if it performs uh, correctly. Okay, what I think is the uh, a good way to manage complexity of uh, shell scripts is to uh, divide functionality into functions. Right? So those are the, the building blocks of, uh, of robust and clean shell scripts, in my opinion. Uh, uh, a function, if you're not familiar with uh, uh, shell functions or bash functions, it's a kind of a script inside a script and, and it, it performs like a, a script. Right? So passing arguments to um, uh, a bash function, uh, it works the same way as passing arguments to uh, a script uh, using positional parameters. Uh, so inside a function, variable $1 is the first uh, argument, $2 is the second argument and so on. Uh, uh, the return value of a shell function is its exit status, uh, so zero for everything worked okay, uh, or uh, one for anything else that uh, did not work okay. Uh, typically, it's the exit status of the last uh, command inside the, uh, the function, or you can explicitly uh, return and then uh, specify the exit status. Other types of return values, uh, for example, a string or some outputs, we have to manage through uh, the I.O. Uh, input outputs uh, of uh, of bash. Uh, so the syntax uh, of uh, declaring a function is uh, the name of the function and then uh, yeah, brackets uh, and uh, between the uh, the braces uh, you type the, the code. Now the the funny thing is, uh, apart from saying uh, this is a function, those braces do nothing. Uh, so you never use braces when calling a function in Bash, which is something that uh, confuses uh, my beginning Linux students. Uh, so this is a function a function call. It's just like calling um, a normal uh, Linux command with, uh, with arguments. Uh, so if I call my function with arg1, arg2, arg3, uh, inside the function $1 will be arg1, $2 will be arg2, and so on. Uh, so, uh, also, uh, you do not specify, uh, like in Java or another programming language, you do not specify the arguments inside those, uh, those braces. 
so an example of a, a functional uh, function, uh, MKD. Uh, uh, so inside the, the function, uh, I'm assigning $1 to uh, a variable called dir in this case, and then I'm creating a directory uh, and a CD into that directory. For example, if I call MKD with this as argument, it will create directory A with subdirectory B and subdirectory C, and it will uh, change CD into those, uh, this directory. Uh, what is also interesting to, uh, uh, to note is that when you execute a function in bash, that it does not create a subshell. Uh, so you, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with a variable scope inside bash. Um, if you create a subshell, you call another, another script, the variables on uh, the top level are not passed on to the uh, to the subshell. Um, but a function does not create a, a subshell, so all variables are within the same scope as the uh, the script, uh, the, the main script code, which is something that you have to uh, take into account. Uh, I think I have a, an, an example later on. Uh, this is a more elaborate uh, example of a, uh, of a function. Uh, I have some scripts that writes um, um, an ISO, for example, for installing uh, an installer CD uh, to a USB stick. Uh, I use DD for this, uh, but the problem with DD is uh, it doesn't show any output, so I pass the output of DD to pipe viewer uh, to have the progress bar, and um, then I have an idea of the, the progress. Uh, so this function takes two arguments, the name of the ISO and the destination. Um, I also create a variable this, that denotes the size of the ISO in, in bytes, uh, and uh, I read the ISO uh, through DD. I pass it through pipe viewer, which will draw a progress bar on the command line. Uh, I know how many bytes have to be written to the uh, to the destination. I pass that on to uh, DD uh, and write it to the, to the destination. So uh, what I want to show is uh, you don't specify arguments. Uh, you can define uh, variables inside uh, a function and. Uh, it's important to uh, realize that normally, if you specify a variable or you define a variable inside a function, it will continue to exist after the function has returned to the to the main script. Uh, this is what the local here uh, does. Uh, it ensures that after ending the uh, the function, these variables will be destroyed and no longer be available. Now, this is also something that to take into account if you write functions, make your variables inside the local. And so, for example, here I, I create a function, I, I de declare a function which will set a variable. If I call this function, so inside the variable will uh, hello world will be uh, declared. If I uh, access that variable outside of the script, it will still, uh, yeah, it, it will exist, uh, it will have the value hello world. Uh, uh, making the variable local uh, will ensure that it doesn't. So this is the script on the slides, if I execute it. Actually this is something, if you're um, familiar with, uh, with Java or another uh, programming language, you would not expect this. So variables inside the function will continue to exist after they have uh, ended. If I make the variable local, then it will crash on unbound variable, which is what you want. Then. Okay, 
Okay, another principle I want to talk about is uh, idempotence. Uh, so the uh, definition of this word is uh, uh, what I found on Wikipedia uh, uh, is a property of an, of an operation that if you uh, apply it multiple times, uh, then the result will be the same after the initial application. Um, applied to uh, system administration, uh, if you've uh, written the scripts to automate some uh, system administration task for, task, for example, setting up a web server, um, if this uh, script is idempotent, that would mean that after uh, executing the script multiple times, it, it will, won't do anything the second time. Right? Or the first uh, execution of the script will bring your system to the desired state. Uh, uh, all um, uh, principles that are um, baked into configuration management systems. But I think it's important to uh, try to adhere, adhere to these principles in writing simple shell scripts as well. Uh, for example, this script uh, that adds a user to a system can only be run once. Um, so here, uh, let's say I have written a script that takes two arguments from the command line, the, the username and the password. Yeah, I practice, I know, sorry. <coughs> an example. Um, the command add user, uh, if the user does not exist, it will create it, but if the user already exists, it will fail. So the second time that I execute this script, it will fail. Uh, so it's important to, uh, each step uh, where you perform a change, uh, to, to the system, check whether it is actually necessary to uh, perform this, uh, this change. Uh, so in this example, I use the command get ends pass uh, wd. Uh, the get ends uh, command will search in, uh, can search in several um, uh, configurations files in the etc directory. For example, get and pass wd will search, search inside uh, etc pass wd. <coughs> get and services will search in etc services. Excuse me, it goes through the next service switch, so it also yeah. checks out that uh, 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 or uh, 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 yeah. or authentication sources. Yeah. Okay. Not okay. Uh, but what I want to do uh, achieve here is um, the command get and pass wd, give it a, the, a username. As an uh, as an argument, if the user exists, it will exit with exit status zero, everything okay. Uh, if it does not exist, it will uh, be exit status one, and um, it will create some outputs that I'm not interested in. So I pass that on to dev null. So ignore the the outputs. Uh, logical operations uh, if for, while, and so on. Everything where you uh, check on a uh, boolean in bash works using uh, exit status. So exit status 0 is true, exit status 1 is false. Uh, the exclamation mark here is not. So if uh, user was not found in the password file, then this will, uh, this will be exit status uh, 1. Uh, a not in front of it will be exit state 0, then the uh, add user command will be executed. If not, nothing happens. Eh? So if the uh, user already exists, it will skip uh, this step and uh, move on to the, uh, to the next uh, step. Okay, so every time you uh, do a change to a system, uh, check if it's necessary, especially uh, when the, your command can only be run once. Uh, so make your scripts idempotent, eh? especially if you have a, a complex script that performs a complex task. Um, make the script fail as, as soon as something goes wrong, then you can fix uh, the uh, you can fix something and run the script again, and you're confident that everything that's already been what was already done will be skipped and it will continue uh, where where you left off earlier. Uh, so your script will not make unnecessary changes, and the result of your script is the desired state of your system. 
And your script can be run on under any circumstance. So, and even if the, the task was already performed halfway, and you just run the script and it will, uh, will, will pick up where you where you went. And this gives you much more confidence that your script will uh, perform the way that you expect. Okay, and I'm, let's check on the, on the time. Okay. Uh, a few tips on impro to improve readability. As you saw here, uh, novice uh, Linux users will have a hard time to interpret what is happening here. It's the, the way that uh, Booleans work, yeah? uh, logic um, works in, in, in Bash is totally different from common, more common uh, programming languages. Uh, so, in order to prove readability, uh, my suggestion, uh, suggestions are um, use small letters to define local variables that are uh, living only inside your script and capitals for environment variables or exported uh, variables. <coughs> That's one thing. Uh, give your positional parameters to uh, functions a meaningful name, like in the in this, uh, uh, in this example, uh, this will make the uh, expected arguments to the function more explicit uh, because you, you can see them on the first lines of, of the script. Uh, so you can see that, my, uh, that I expect two arguments and the one should be an ISO and the other should be the destination for where to copy. Uh, this is, a, I think, a considerable improvement to readability. Um, yeah, an example on how to uh, how to use this in three functions. Uh, I showed the, the one before. Uh, create a local variable for each expected um, parameter. Um, quote, uh, quotations in uh, quote characters in in Bash are also something that cause uh, confusion for novice users. Uh, the back quotes. The, the, the meaning of backwards is the, this, the command between them is executed and the standard output is, uh, you know, is, is taken from that and it's, in this case it's put into the variable ISO size. Uh, using backwards in scripts is generally uh, no longer uh, not uh, recommended anymore. Use uh, for command substitution, use dollar and then normal, uh, normal brackets instead. This is more clear than the backwards. Uh, depending on the font that you're using, the difference between backwards and normal quotes is uh, uh, maybe too, too small and too confusing. Uh, especially uh, novice students that are still using words uh, to keep notes. Uh, if you copy-paste uh, uh, text with quotes inside a Word document, it will change them and that will also cause confusion. What I also do in, uh, when I'm writing scripts is to use the long param parameter names instead of the short ones. Uh, for example, I have a backup script that uses rsync. Um, rsync is a command that I don't use too often. Uh, so if I read this, then I do not remember what all these uh, uh, parameters mean. Uh, so in shell scripts, I take the time to write out the, uh, the long uh, options. So I at least have a better idea of what is going on here. Uh, another suggestion is to split long lines. Uh, if you end a line with a backslash, a space, and then a backslash, uh, then the, uh, the command will continue on the on the next line. And this is a typical style of how I split up along pipelines on uh, on several lines. Uh, longer lines are harder to interpret. Uh, a suggestion is each line does uh, each uh, different operation on a separate line. Uh, and another su suggestion is that if you have com more complex tests uh, for your if statements like this one, um, especially uh, novice Linux users uh, have a hard time to interpret what is happening here. So it can be a good idea to 
uh, encode this in a function with a um, with a meaningful name. So, uh, for example, at this type of code, on this code, uh, get and pass wd, I put this in a function called user exists. Uh, so this is, I think, easier to interpret. Uh, if uh, not user exists, the name of the user, then uh, add it. Uh, so this will perform the same way as the command. Uh, it will check the exit status of the function exit status of the function is the exit status of the last command, so that get end uh, command. And then some other recommendations that I took from the clean code book. Uh, there's a, a whole chapter on functions uh, and, and methods in, in Java then, but they are perfectly applicable to bash uh, scripting as well. And use descriptive names, uh, you all know that there are only two hard things in uh, computer science, uh, cache invalidation, and naming things. Um, so take your time to uh, name, uh, like give meaningful names to functions and variables, which will uh, greatly improve readability. Uh, apply the single responsibility uh, principle. Uh, if you split up uh, a complex script in functions, uh, make sure that your functions do only one thing, do it well, and only that. The, it's also called uh, the command query separation uh, function either does something, uh, changes something, or uh, asks for some information or looks up some information. Um, and this is, uh, you could discuss this, but I, I, I believe in, uh, in keeping one level of abstraction for each function. And uh, that means some uh, uh, complex scripts uh, usually have uh, nested for loops and ifs and so on. Is it time? Right. Yeah, sure. Uh, so create a number of functions uh, that, and, and call them in the, uh, in the for loop. Um, if these functions have descriptive names, uh, that also greatly helps to, uh, you know, to, to know what is going on. I don't think I have uh, uh, examples, but I could, uh, I, if you want to discuss this later on, I can uh, show you some examples in the scripts that I have. Have written. Uh, also, uh, uh, functions should not have side effects. Uh, in particular, uh, do not make changes to non-local variables uh, or to, uh, to changed states. Uh, make sure that the effect of a function only depends on the parameters. Uh, it's, uh, um, this is also a principle applied in, uh, in functional programming. Uh, it also makes your uh, programs uh, easier to, to test. Uh, you can, uh, if the effect of a function only depends on its, its parameters, it's easier to write uh, uh, to write unit tests that uh, are, are valid. Uh, like that, really. Uh, uh, check what is going on. And then, uh, if you're creating a lot of functions, uh, then uh, yeah, in what order are you? Should you write them in uh, inside your script? You can go alphabetically or in, in what order? The suggestion of Uncle Bob uh, Martin is uh, what he calls the step-down rule. Uh, he says that uh, the code should read uh, from top to bottom like a, a narrative. So every function is followed by the definition of the functions defined on the ne next level of abstraction. That brings me uh, to the end of what I, I wanted to. Uh, to, to share. Did anyone uh, learn something today? Oh, cool, that's awesome. Oh, thank you so much for, uh, for listening. Uh, I don't know if we have uh, time for, for questions. Um, I give a lot of presentations, but I just researched Git, which seems brilliant. Yes, um, I, learned, uh, I learned about Git pitch from the daughter of uh, Robert, who teaches here That's, uh, oh, yeah. uh, a few years ago, and I, I've been using it ever since. I did lectures uh, as well. And yeah, and so your slides, are they also in source available? So yes, I yes. learn by seeing. Uh, the, this is the GitHub okay, uh, repository yeah. with uh, the presentation uh, uh, code. I'm going to if you have any questions later on, I can uh, I can give you a demo or ask uh, or ask Fien. Uh, she uh, she also has uh, done a lot of work with uh, with Git, which uh, is quite impressive. Cool. Thanks so much. I was just gonna tell him that like 
all you need is in the pitchme.md all yeah. markdown. Yeah. Yeah, but you need to learn about uh, it's not that difficult that actually. Okay. Any other questions or remarks? Uh, how do you automate um, things if both, um, like you start up your computer and it would automatically do something? Like or another thing that I want to do actually is I want to write uh, a file to a server <laughs> when I connect to my uh, Wi-Fi. That type of operation, I wouldn't exactly know. What uh, what I do, for example, is uh, my download folder. I uh, delete all files older than 14 days. Uh, but that's uh, a Chrome job. That's easier. Every time my machine boots, it runs a script, and and that's it. But to uh, to automate something that happens when you Oh, I don't know much. His idea is, it's conceptually possible, but it's not easy. Mm -hmm. If you take a product like the pineapple, it does that. What it does is, uh, you say on the pineapple uh, what the Wi-Fi network is, and then the pineapple will tell your access point, stop what you're doing, I'm the strongest access point, so relay everybody to me. So then the pineapple becomes your single access point. The thing is, everything that happens in, in, the, in Pineapple will be logged. So if you put a Pineapple in a room, it will log all the Wi-Fi traffic of all the users who think they are connected to the usual AP. So it's a security thing. But you can use the same method yourself, uh, hacking probably a Raspberry Pi or something, and make that your access point, and uh, tell the usual access point everything goes via me. And then there you can, of course, if it builds up a connection, trigger it to set a file to some server and then it continues the whole work. So it is possible, but do you really want to build it? It's something else. Yeah, you All right. Thanks so much for coming.